Hello, in this video I am going to show you how to remotely control one computer with another so that you can do amazing things like work from home but have full access to your office computer. All right. So this is for free and we are going to use a remote desktop uh, from Google. So the first thing that I recommend you have is Google Chrome. Okay, so this is the Google browser and it's just going to work more reliably uh, in Google Chrome. So if you don't have Google Chrome, you know, open up your uh, favorite browser, right? And do a search for Google Chrome. All right, and you're going to want to go to basically it's google.com slash chrome here. Right, and you're going to download Chrome, accept and install. All right, save that file. In Firefox, the file will come up here in the top right. Uh, if you have um, Internet Explorer or Edge, I should say, uh, it'll kind of come down near the bottom. It'll be obvious. Just click on Run if that's the case. Here, we click here on the down arrow and run the Chrome setup file. Okay, and when that starts running, you can close your browser to avoid confusion. All right, I already have Chrome on this system. I'm just reinstalling it to give you an idea of how to do this. I want to show you all the steps uh, so that, you know, total newbies can get this done. You know, this is, it's, it's a bit of a twisty thing to do. So I want everything to be perfect for you. All right, so, um, so now we have Google Chrome set up here. Uh, it, it's come up. So uh, now what we're going to do is you need a Google account. All right. I know a lot of you may already have that, but again, I'm going to put you through those steps. So please be patient here. Uh, go to gmail.com. All right. If you don't already have an account and you're going to say create an account. All right. And uh, you're going to put your first name in and of course your last name, right? And then you have to make make up a Gmail address, something before uh, the Gmail part, right? So all right, hopefully that's available. We'll find out soon, right? And uh, put in a password, you gotta put in the password again, right? And please write down your password. All right. So let's click next. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to have to verify this. I'm not going to put my phone number on this video. So you won't see this part of it. All right. But um, in a moment, we'll be back. Okay. So, so here we are in, um, I'm just going to, close those distracting boxes in the top there. So here we are after verifying with a phone call, right? If if you don't have a cell phone, uh, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to send you a text, but you won't get that if you don't have a cell phone. There's going to be a little link below that says call instead, and you're going to click on that link and it'll ring your line, your landline. Okay, so, uh, but we've already gone through that non-visually because I didn't want my phone number on YouTube. So, um, but now here you can, you can, it'll, it'll have your phone number in if that's how you've already, I'm taking it out, but it, it would have it in here under phone number. I do recommend that if you have a cell phone or regular phone, give them your phone number so that you can do recovery if you have problems with your account, right? And also put in a non-Google uh, email address, right? I'm going to skip that for now. And uh, this is, you know, the whole sample thing going on here. And, um, and we're going to go through and do this cool coolness here. I'm obviously male, I think. Okay, so, you know, you want to make sure that you copy down your email address and the password that you have. It's going to be very important later, all right? So, you know, next, all right? And then you're going to scroll down to the bottom of all this fun stuff read it, of course, and I agree, right? You know, wait, and this is your Google account is activating. So a Gmail account 
is like a it, it is a Google account. That Gmail address is your username, and a password is your password. And those two things will get you into all kinds of free Google services and paid if you want to go that route. But uh, and the key here is that it's going to get us into that whole remote thing. Okay, so um, you know next. Okay and you're in Gmail. So now you have yourself a fancy new Gmail address if you've never had one before, and we can basically ignore that, right? Because <laughs> we're not interested in checking email at this point, we want to do the remote thing. So uh, so let's go ahead and get started on that. We want to type in to the address bar of Google Chrome, remote desktop dot Google.com. Now you can do this from Firefox, etc., but it it's weirder. Okay, so best to do Google stuff on Google stuff is the idea here. So so now we're here, and we have these choices: remote access or remote support. We are interested in remote access, so we're going to click on that, and then you get to that slash access area, right? Um, and here we have. Um, would you like to install Chrome Remote Desktop to this device, all right? Easy peasy, I could say install right here. I'm gonna assume you may not get that prompt, okay? So I'm gonna say, go ahead and click this arrow. You know, you could, you could just click that install, right? But I've closed it because you may not see it. It may close before you get a chance to, you know, things happen, right? So once you're here, you can always go click this little button here click on add to Chrome. This is the way that always works, right? Because that other thing may not pop up. You're gonna say add extension, right? You don't have to turn on this sync. That's not critical at this point, right? Um, but, you know, go ahead, do it. Uh, you know, yes, I'm in. Okay, and here in the bottom is this installer for Chrome, remote desktop. So you're gonna click on the little arrow there and click open, right? And now it's installing the coolness that's gonna let you uh, remotely control this computer. So I should have mentioned uh, very specifically, you're doing this on your office computer if that's the one you want to control. Not This isn't the one you're controlling with. We're assuming you're at the office, you're doing the office computer. The one at home, it's a bit different, right? So. Um, here we go, now we have an accept and install. See, there's a buttons all over the place. Yes, all right? Uh, automatically close and attempt to restart them. Sure, if you get a message like this, let's do it. Okay, so I think that's got it. We're in there and now it's because it's now asking for us to name this computer. So we're gonna say, you know, let's be blatant here, office computer. Right, and then we're going to go and hit next. All right, now this is super important to write down as well. You're going to choose a pin. All right, it has to be at least six numbers. So I'm going to put in six numbers. You can leave that, that's fine. Okay, start. Do we want to save this password here? Yeah, no, we'll skip that. Okay. Now you see this little green line, so it's starting. It's doing its thing. It's setting up. Okay. Office computer starting online. That's what you want to see. When this computer says online, you can now remotely control it. Right? So, so we can, and you don't have to have Google Chrome open to control it. Of course, you know, people ask this, it's a bit of a silly question, but I'm gonna give you the answer. Yes, you have to leave your computer on to be able to remotely control it. And now that I say that, let's make sure that it stays on, okay? So this is really important. Your office computer, it might go to sleep or hibernate if you walk away from it for an hour or whatever, right? So let's turn that off. So you're gonna click on the start button and you're going to go control panel. So you're going to start just typing in control panel. Click on this. You don't have to see this line down here. 
you, you can click on your start button and just start typing and things will start coming up that match. Okay, so start typing in the word control and you should see control panel. So you're gonna go to your control panel, okay? Uh, top right hand corner, just choose small icons so that you have the same view I have here. You can maximize if you like. You'll find a power options bit here. This is Windows 10, the office computer we're building up here. It's Windows 10. It, this will be very similar in uh, Windows 7 or whatever, okay? So whatever plan that you have, balanced, whatever, you're gonna click on change plan settings, okay? Make sure that it says never for um, putting the computer to sleep. You, you, the, the display can go down, that doesn't matter, right? But make sure it says never when it put when it's put to sleep. If you have like a laptop, it'll have like when it's on battery, when it's plugged in. You know, leave your laptop plugged in at work, and of course, right? And then you don't have to put never under the battery option, but you do have to put it under the uh, plugged in option. Okay. And then you want to save those changes. Okay. Now that will bring you back to you know, this screen when you hit save changes. I didn't make any changes right there, so it didn't pop me back. I didn't, I couldn't click on save. So the other thing is um, you can double check things. You can click again and then go to advanced power settings. Okay, and then just go under sleep, right? And make sure if you expand sleep that it says never. And if it doesn't, you wanna go in there and, you know, make sure that you know, you go down to what would be zero, it'll be, and then it's never, right? And then while you're in there, you may wanna just, this isn't totally related, right? So, but you may wanna just tweak under power buttons and lid um, to have it so when you press your power button, things actually shut down. When you sleep, instead of going to sleep, it hibernates. That's best for laptops and desktops because then they're not actually using power, right? If you, if you put your, laptop to sleep, it's still trickling off the battery, right? But if it hibernates, no power use, right? So it's just better. And then uh, when you close the lid on your laptop, that uh, this isn't a laptop, so we don't have that option. But since we're in here, when you close your lid, I think for most people, you would actually want it to do nothing. That way you can close it and move it to another room and open it, right? And then get back to work, it's still running. But you may like it to, it to hibernate or sleep when you do that. Again, I suggest hibernate if you want it to save a state but not use power. Anyway, that's all good. Click OK, and you've dealt with the power options. Now you can confidently walk away from your office computer and know that it's not going to turn off on its own, you know, unless there's a power failure or some um, enthusiastic staff member feels it shouldn't be on and shuts it down. That happens. Let everyone know. Put a sticker on your screen. Do not turn off this computer, right? That kind of thing. So that's the office computer is ready to go. Okay, so this is a virtual machine. I'm gonna switch to another virtual machine here. This is a Windows 7 machine. Now, um, I actually don't have Chrome on this machine. Uh, so I'm not gonna make you go through the whole install process again. I'm gonna pause the video, install Chrome, and then we'll be back one moment. Okay, so here we are back and we have Google Chrome running. You can right click and oh, it's already pinned. Okay, but if it's not, you can right click and just make sure it's pinned to say pin this program to the taskbar if it's not already done so. Okay, so uh, so now it's the same, you're, you're at home, right? Let's pretend I'm a home office computers 500 miles away. Okay, so again, remote, desktop dot google dot com okay and then when you get here you're going to click on remote access okay now it's going to say hey dude sign in right so uh one sec while i grab that address okay so this is the uh, gmail address that we set up i set up let's go Click next password, right? I'm gonna jump in there. Okay, now we're logged in. At home, you know, 
you may want to go ahead and save that password because that's where you're going to need it, right? And then go ahead, turn on sync, right? If you want, you don't have to, that's not critical. Uh, yes, I'm in, there we go, okay. Uh, no, this is good, okay, all right. So, uh, so when you log in, it shows you your office computer. There it is. It's online. That I mean, you're not seeing the computer itself, but you're seeing the link to it, right? So this is the link to your office computer. So keep in mind, uh, which I haven't already mentioned, that at the office, say you have three computers and you want to be able to control each of them, you could do the same setup that we just did on all three computers with the same account, right? You don't need a new account for each one. And then you would have a list here, right? So just like on this one here, it says, this device set up remote access. I could I could set it up so that I could control the office computer from home and I can control the home computer from the office, right? So no matter where I am, you could you could have a whole wheel of computers all over the world that you're controlling, right? So this is really cool. This is like this is a free service. If you go to teamviewer.com, you can get all kinds of great features and everything, but they'll charge you like crazy. It's super expensive this free and and same basic feature set right all the stuff you need all right so uh, so let's just go ahead and control you're gonna click on your office computer right and it's gonna say enter the pin now you can you know if, if you want to make things easy you can say remember my pin on this device you don't have to for security sake you may not want to and then you put in your pin okay and then you click the little blue thing there and <laughs> Unable to connect to our servers to set up the remote connection. All right, well, that's a laugh during a tutorial, but that's their problem, right? So um, I suspect that may be, um, you know, there may be just a lot of activity today. A lot of people are setting up today because this whole coronavirus thing and everybody wants to connect, right? So um, let's try that again. Ah, perfect. Okay, that makes me feel better that I can actually show you stuff. So, uh, you know, this little guy here. Okay, it that little thing shows up at the other end. You see it. They can click stop sharing if you know. Say if your wife was trying to jump in and you were at work and you're doing something important and she wants to control things and you don't want her to, you can click on that little button and it'll kick her off. Right, so the person at the other end gets a chance to kick you off. That's all that was about. So uh, some things you should know. Okay, so now now you can just do all the stuff. You check emails, file things. It's pretend you're sitting in front of your computer at the office. That's the experience, right? Uh, a big difference, of course, is that you might be working from a little laptop at home and you got this giant screen at at the office. Right? So a few things you can do about that. One is there's this little blue thing on the right hand side. So you can click on that and it'll give you a bunch of options. The first one, really obvious one, is full screen, right? So you know, click on that little guy and then the office computer window will fill your whole screen and it will really feel so much more like you're controlling your screen from you know, that you're sitting in actually in front of your office. But still, you may have the issue of the office screen is like twice as big as your little laptop screen and everything's too tiny to see, right? So what you can do is you can change, you can literally change the display settings um, on your work computer. You know, you, when you get to work, you know, change them back so that it, because everything will seem huge when you get to work. But you can right click and say display settings, okay? And then right now, um, 1280 by 768 is the uh, is the resolution there, right? So, uh, so you would want to go for something smaller, right? I'm not actually going to switch it at this point because it, you know, this is a very reasonable um, thing. But say if I wanted to go to 800 by 600, you're going to go for a smaller numbers, and then everything will seem bigger. So the smaller numbers give you bigger icons and text and everything okay and then once you choose choose that uh it'll it well let's just go ahead and do it all right not that don't play with that 
uh, okay, let's just go 800 by 600. Keep changes. You know, that's that's what you needed to know. It's going to say that. So, um, what were we at here? Something like that. There we go. Keep changes. So we switch back. Okay, so so you need to know that, right? Full screen experience, and you can change your display resolution. All right. So there are other options, right? Um, you, you can play with them. So many of them are just, uh, how would you say it, um, obvious, right? So enable clipboard, clipboard synchronization. For some reason, that was a mouthful for me. So I really highly recommend that, you know, hit begin, hit allow, right? Click OK, right? And then now when you're copying and pasting, you can do it across the computers right so and that's a blessing you know you're, you're just going to need that at times so turn that on right if you if you're a copy paster you're going to need that right um and then here we have things like if you have to if you have to send control alt delete to the remote computer you you do it here right you you, you know you got oh i got to send control alt delete. you click on this little thing come down here and say press control alt delete press print screen press f11 these are all things that uh, have are are going to be uh, uh, by default captured by your home computer, right? Not sent. They won't be sent. So you, to send those keystrokes, you have to do it here, right? Uh, you know, there's fancy key mappings you can play with, right? And uh, if you have multiple screens, you can you can have show all displays which could be really ugly, right? Like if you've got a tiny little laptop screen and you've got two huge screens at work and you can see both of them, good luck reading anything, right? So here you would, um, well, I don't have more than one display, but you'd be able to choose which display you want to see. So that's going to be critical for some people, right? Um, you can upload and download files. To be honest, I've never played with that, but it sounds amazingly fun. And um, da, 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 da. yeah, I mean, I, that's all that's all the critical stuff, right? So, um, yeah, I think the only thing that I have not spoken of here that you might need, and and to be honest, I'm not seeing it right here, is the ability to print from the office to your house. Right. You know, you might want to do that. So there is something called Google Print. That's a whole other video. It's so um, um, I am going to recommend that you if, if you're not if you don't have to do a lot of printing, you don't want to get into all that complexity of setting up Google Print as well as Google Remote Desktop. Uh, just email from your office to the house. Right. You know, you should be able to do that. Right. Um, maybe you're not set up for that, but um, but that's an option a lot of people would have and understand, right? And uh, just so you know, in terms of, say you have a work email address, right? Uh, you can often just type in webmail dot and then your domain, whatever that is, dot com, and then hit enter, and it'll actually let you log into your work email or whatever, right? So that that's not true for everybody, but it is true for an amazing number of people who have no clue that it's actually true. So, and your username, your, you know, you put in your email address and then you'd, you'd have to know your email password, hopefully you do. And then that might get you so that you could, you sort of send an email to yourself at work and then jump in and get it. That's just another option for you, okay? But um, there you go. That th those are the basics, right? And then you can always go in here and uh, uncheck full screen. This goes back in a window, right? Then you can minimize that. You can do stuff on your home computer. Then you can go back here, and then you can just click on full screen again, and then click over here, and then uh, press and hold escape to exit full screen. That's easy too, right? Press and hold escape, right? There you go. Okay. And then uh, another thing I just saw, which if you want to exit full screen, right, is if you go, what's that go? If you go just to the top of the screen, see that X that comes down. So you're just going to go up and hit the top of the screen, like throw your cursor over above the screen as it were, 
and then if you hit that X, you're out of full screen. So there's a bunch of ways to get out. Um, so don't feel trapped. All right. Good luck and God bless.